Hi, I'm Lex Rooker, and I'd like to take you on a journey into the fascinating world of clocks and horology. Today, we're going to learn the basic functions of a simple, time-only mechanical clock movement and how a clock tells time. We'll take the movement apart, reassemble it, and then put it in beat so that it will run reliably. This will give us a solid foundation for future training where we'll cover cleaning, inspection, common maintenance procedures, and lubrication in detail. For this tutorial, we will work with this eight-day time-only movement available from Time Savers. Just look for part number 30468 in the Time Savers catalog or on their website. The tools you'll need for this tutorial are shown here. You'll need a nut driver to remove the nuts that hold the movement together. A small crescent wrench would work as well. This is a letdown key. You'll use it to wind and unwind the mainspring in place of the regular winding key. We'll use a small pair of needle nose pliers for several operations we will perform. Finally, I like to use tweezers to move things around when I'm reassembling a movement. Tweezers allow a more delicate touch than other tools used for the purpose and will often save you from applying too much force and damaging something. Basically, here's how a clock works. The power source, mainspring or weight, provides the power to move the gears or wheels in the wheel train. There is a lot of power stored here, so we must have some way to control its release. That control is provided by the escapement. This anchor assembly acts like a switch to slowly meter the release of power one tooth at a time through the escape wheel. The rate at which this escape wheel turns is controlled by the pendulum, the timing source. The length of the pendulum determines the rate at which it swings back and forth. Longer, slower, shorter, faster. The pendulum assembly is connected to the escapement through the crutch, which allows the escapement and the pendulum to work together. The escapement also provides power through the crutch to keep the pendulum swinging. The escape wheel controls how fast all the wheels in the wheel train turn. The gear ratios in the wheel train are selected so that one arbor somewhere in the clock turns exactly once per hour to display the time in minutes. That's where we put the big hand on the clock. In order to display both hours and minutes, the motion works divides the hourly rotation of the minute hand by 12 to move the hour hand once around the dial for every 12 rotations of the minute hand. And that's it. Now, I know that's a lot of information, so let's break it down.